Welcome back, Rail fans, to another episode of Train Simulator Pro USA. If you missed my live stream earlier today, that's okay. You can always go back and rewatch it. But thank you guys so much for 200 subscribers. Speaking of subscribe, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as it is the best way to support my channel. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. Anyways, let's get started. This hell train is going from Tacoma all the way to Vancouver, but it's going to be a little bit different. Since we haven't used, since the GP7 is basically our game near the end of their retirement, it's going to be, be led by GP7. Increase the volume. Let's connect to the empties. Back up to the lead locomotive, and away we go with the hell train.
Oh, that's why we had to stop. Washington Western Food Train. Bound for Vancouver Food Factory. Alright, to Vancouver we go. And once again, folks, if you're wondering where the other two GP7s are, I got them working maintenance of way equipment between between these two train yards. Hold on. Kenwick and Yamaki train yard. Just be there's a bridge that needs repaired, so I got them working maintenance of way. Washington and Western Railroad has never had a disaster, a derailment happen, and I would like to keep it that way. Sure, we may run a little late, but hey, we get the job done with no questions asked. And the FRA also granted us, instead of being a short line, we are now a Class 2 Railroad. I can say we're impressed with our hauling on their visit here. It's nice to settle down and relax in a nice wor world of Train Simulator Pro USA. Yep, looks like we got a passenger train that just left the coma station. Passenger trains have a higher priority over the freight trains. And there goes the last car over the junction. For those of you who haven't seen what the inside of the GP7 looks like, it's really nothing too interesting. I mean, you get a crappy seat, you get the horn, which is literally a button instead of a lever. Right here is the, your independent, right there is your brake, your throttle, and then obviously your, um, and then your notches, or, I'm not sure what this is called, while I'm touching. Oh well. Let's get to Vancouver.
And we're in the tunnel. Wow, it's already turning daylight. Past the Olympia Power Plant. And if you're wondering where these empties will go, go, we'll disconnect the rear GP7 and it will shove them into Vancouver, into, um, Vancouver Chemical Factory. The sun is up, so that means I can finally shut off my headlights. Look away from the sun. Back in the early days of the Washington and Western Railroad, GP7s were all we had for motive power. And now we got these beautiful ex Canadian Pacific RC44 locomotives for long distance trains.
Oh, we got another passenger train coming by. Approaching our destination of Vancouver Train Yard. Oh, that is trippy that you can still see the, the rear view mirror of the RC44 when you're not in it. Wow, Vancouver train yard is filled up to the brim. So after these GP7s, the rear GP7 gets done shoving the empties into uh, the chemical factory. They're both going to take some take these cars and put them in their respective places, except for the coal hoppers. But these tankers are going to be put in on another truck in the Vancouver chemical factory. And then these refrigerator cars, they're going to obviously put them in the food factory just beyond the crossing. And these RC44 locomotives will just sit in the yard. Disconnect, and voila, we already got a lot of mooning. I guess we can do this, but since the maintenance of ways in between these two yards and not this track right here, we'll use a, both RC44 locomotives. Even though it's just for a short trip. But the GP7s need to, to continue their work in Vancouver. So they, they couldn't be used for this local. So the RC44s ran light powered from Vancouver all the way to here. And reversed back into the junction to where they were. To where they are. Okay, and away we go to Kenwick train yard.
next maintenance of waste stuff will be to reduce to reduce the risk of a flooding happening along these tracks right here because as you can tell hold on let me zoom out the water's getting pretty close to the land so we're thinking about like potentially maybe adding a bridge or a runoff or somewhere along that lines to diverge the water so that way the tracks don't get flooded Five thirteen. And no, this is not the bridge. There's another bridge along the right side of that track that needs that's where the maintenance of way is happening. Also notice every trip delivery we've done to this yard coming from this that direction, we always end up on this track. At least there's four tanker cars here. But this is going to be the final resting place of the RC 44s for tonight. I forgot how much they like to break. They really like to go and they really love to stop. Alright. Disconnect. And I did that. Just realized I had that whole light without my cap light on. Alright folks. Well I think that's going to do it for this episode. And I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good night and... And remember, watch out for trains.